This is lesson 4-2, which is graphing rational functions. Our essential question is, how can you graph a rational function? So example one is to rewrite a rational function to identify asymptotes. So we're rewriting oops, g of x equals 4x divided by x minus 3. So we're going to use long division, and we're going to say 4x divided by x minus 3, and I'm going to put a plus 0, so we have placeholders there. So then I'm going to say x times what gives me 4x? Well, that's 4. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. We're subtracting, so that becomes positive 12. So that means the remainder is 12 over x minus 3. So we can rewrite g of x as 4 plus 12 over x minus 3. And what that allows us to see is that plus 4, that positive 4 out front, is a shift up 4. The x minus 3 is a shift to the right 3. And the 12 is a vertical stretch by a factor of 12. Okay, so, and then if we're sketching a graph, the 4 and the 3 tell us where our asymptotes are. So you can see that our new vertical asymptote is at x equals 3. Our new horizontal asymptote is at y equals 4. And it's kind of hard to tell with this graph, but this vertical stretch, so it's stretching out our graph by a factor of 12. Okay, example two is how do you find vertical and horizontal asymptotes of a rational function? So vertical asymptotes are going to be whatever number makes the denominator equal zero. So you can see on this function, I'm going to want to factor it. So I say what multiplies 12 and adds to 7 would be x plus 3 and x plus 4. So that means my vertical asymptotes are x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 4. Now horizontal asymptotes are identifying the biggest power of x. So on this particular problem that we're looking at, our biggest power of x is x squared. So we have 0x squared on the top, and we have 1x squared in the denominator. 0 divided by 1 is 0, so y equals 0 would be our horizontal asymptote. And just to kind of give you other examples, let's say I had 2x plus 1 over x minus 5. So if I was finding the horizontal asymptote here, I would say... The biggest power of x is just x to the first power, so just x. So we have 2x over 1x, which would just be 2. So the horizontal asymptote would be 2. If the power in the numerator is bigger, like x squared plus 1 over x minus 5, that would be 2x squared over 0x squared, which is undefined, so we would say no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so example three is to graph. So we have um, f of x equals 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 4. So what we're going to do is I like to find a little list of all the things. So starting with the vertical asymptote, what makes the denominator equal 0? So if I set 3x minus 4 equal to 0, I'd add 4 divided by 3. So that means it's x equals 4 thirds. My horizontal asymptote would be the biggest power of x. So I have 2x over 3x, so that would be y equals 2 thirds. Then my x-intercept we're going to find by what makes the numerator equal 0. So if I set 2x plus 1 equal to 0 and solve for x, I get negative 1 half. And finally, my y-intercept, I plug in 0 for x. So if I plug in 0 for all the x's, I would get negative 1 fourth. So all of those are going to help me graph here. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to use a different color. So let's do the asymptotes. So 4 thirds is a little bit past 1, so that would be 1 and a third. And then my horizontal asymptote is 2 thirds. Okay, and then I have a x-intercept at negative one-half and a y-intercept at negative a fourth. 
So that's kind of enough to see what's happening on this side. And then sometimes you might want to plug in a number to the both sides of your vertical asymptote. So I could plug in two and see what numbers I get out, but you're going to end up with oops, something like a little bit better graph than that. So the more points you find, the more accurate it's going to be. But you can see that our asymptotes guide the shape of the graph. So they tell us our end behavior and also our behavior as we approach the vertical asymptote. Okay, final example is another graph. So this one's a little bit more complicated graph. So um, I'm going to find all those different things again. So if I start with the vertical asymptote, in order to find the vertical asymptote on this one, I need to factor the denominator. So this would factor to x plus 5 and x minus 3. So that means my vertical asymptotes would be at negative 5 and positive 3. My horizontal asymptote, I have 4x squared over x, 1x squared, so it would be y equals 4. My x-intercept, I'm going to set the numerator equal to 0. It's a difference of squares. So it's 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. So I'm going to have two x-intercepts. I'm going to have one at positive 3 halves and one at negative 3 halves, or 1.5 and negative 1.5. And my y-intercept, if I plug in 0 for all the x's, I'm going to get negative 9 over negative 15, or we can say 9 fifteenths, which reduces to 3 fifths. Okay, let's put all this on the graph now. Okay, so I'm going to switch colors for my asymptotes again. So at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And then y equals 4. Okay, switch back to my color here. Okay, so then I'm going to plot my x-intercept at negative 1.5 and one and a half. And my y-intercepts at three-fifths, kind of right there. So what this graph is going to look like, it's kind of like that. And then we could plug in like maybe positive four and plug in negative six to find out what values. But by doing that, you're going to discover that the graph looks kind of like that. Okay, so that is graphing rational functions. Let me know if you have any questions.